A UFC title epitomizes combat greatness, and it is the accolade in the mixed martial arts world for hundreds and hundreds of badasses, and yet a handful are able to call themselves champions, the best in the world. And when you capture the title and etch your name in the books, you don't deserve respect. You commend it, in theory. Everything I worked for, man, like, to this point, and to have the fight go like that. It is a culmination of a lifetime's work in the most brutal sport in the world. A dream realized by relentless struggle and ambition. A feat only the absolute best can accomplish. But there is something amiss here. Piotr Jan, in my opinion, was winning this fight. You can make a case 30 to 27, certainly 29, 28. Like, everyone's acting like Aljo kind of sucks. Everyone's acting like Aljo's not as good as he really is. If you see it from the outside, Sehuda definitely got better striking. He got a better base. He's not like a dangerous fighter. He's not someone you have to go out there and be worried about getting finished or put to sleep. You have become world champion. You rule over the sport's most competitive weight class. And yet, all you see is hatred and vitriol, never ending and more malicious with each fight. For a select few champions, it takes time, effort, and a lot of patience. But sooner or later, they all come around. It is a matter of when, and not if. How long can they keep firing? The lightweight division was often regarded as the toughest weight class in MMA, the most difficult to conquer and lead as every dude in the top 10 was a problem, but in recent years, the bantamweight division toppled 155 and succeeded as the most ruthless weight class in the UFC. One of the things that's exciting about what's going on right now in the bantamweight division is that there's so much talent. Mm -hmm. It might be the most talent stacked division in the UFC. Dominic Cruz and Uriah Faber laid the foundation, and then we witnessed some superb talent after another from the top 5 to top 15. After the abrupt halt to the Dominic Cruz era, Hennen Burrell was seen as the next great bantamweight, but out of nowhere, TJ Dillashaw emerged and pretty much ended Burrell's career, but Dillashaw himself was not able to hold on to the title for too long, and the chaos continued for the next several years. You wanna know what else is a mess right now? Is 135 pounds. It's Dominic Cruz is the one that made 135 pounds interesting. The people weren't talking about the division, and when they were talking about it, they were talking about getting rid of that division. In 2020, Olympic gold medalist Henry Cejudo vacated the bantamweight title right after securing his first defense, and the division needed a new ruler. Dominic Cruz and TJ Dillashaw were nowhere in sight, but with athletes such as Corey Sanhagen, Piotr Jan, and Marlon Vera around, the weight class was more competitive than ever before. This is just the most insane pressure cooker that I think any division has ever had because I feel like there's like eight world champions competing for the number one spot. It all came down to Piotr Jan and Jose Aldo at UFC 251, and the Terminator from Russia, aptly named No Mercy, defeated the featherweight GOAT and ushered in a new era. Jan was so impressive that he was almost destined to rule for the foreseeable future, and eventually he would surpass Cruz himself. They can say whatever they want now, it's my time, I will fight anyone and I'll beat anyone. His first victim was Algermain Sterling. The name Algermain Sterling was brutalized by Marlon Moraes inside one round. Before that, he was defeated by Misha Tate's boyfriend. The funk master was on a decent win streak, and while he was good, nobody really saw him as championship material. He was a good name to have on a resume as a customary title defense, and then he would gatekeep for the rest of his career. Mouse don't strangle people though. And you were one of them. I don't have any conflict with him, I just want to beat his curly head up. At UFC 259, Piotr Jan was well on his way to a victory against the challenger, out striking and even out wrestling Sterling. But in the fourth round, Jan connected with an illegal knee to the skull, and Algermain collapsed to the canvas, and he did not get up. I'm not really realizing what is going on right now. I felt like I won every round and just made a stupid mistake. For the first time in UFC history, a championship was won via disqualification, and Sterling, who was a relatively unknown fighter just a couple of seconds ago, became the biggest villain in the UFC. I just don't like the action. I don't like the action in this situation. Aljo takes the title, he throws it to the ground. He's emotional. But almost 30 minutes later or so, I might be off by 10 or so minutes, he's on Twitter. An Oscar-worthy performance inside the octagon was a sickening insult. And while Sterling walked out with a belt around his waist, not a single MMA fan considered him a legitimate champion. He was a pretender who lucked out, but he would get what was coming to him. 
The rematch between Jan and Sterling was set for UFC 273, and Sterling elicited nuclear levels of hatred as soon as he showed up on camera with his fake belt. Piotr, what is it like to get the crowd reaction? You seem to be the fan favorite here in Jacksonville in this fight. Hello, guys. MMA fans were behind Piotr Jan, the rightful champion, and No Mercy was going to finish what he started. Two takedowns attempted, two completed, eight minutes of control time, and the winner by split decision, and still champion Algermain Sterling. The unthinkable had happened. Sterling had defeated Piotr Jan, but he silenced no one. The fans in attendance showered him with boos, and a sizable majority scored in favor of Piotr Jan. Alger was, people weren't respect him, respecting his skills enough, dude, but um, I'd like to see the judges' scorecard to see if they uh, scored any of those 10-8. Yeah, those rounds yeah. that they took the back because that obviously would change the fight completely. Sterling had defended the bantamweight crown, but he was no champion. He just got lucky again. But the next challenger was going to expose him and end this sham of a title reign. That next guy in line was TJ Dillashaw, one of the all-time greats at 135. And on paper, he was the worst stylistic matchup for the pretender champion. Dillashaw, one of the more disliked fighter on the roster, was the clear fan favorite when these two shared the screen. Just imagine, TJ Dillashaw was heralded as the hero here, but then he showed up with one arm in the co-main event. Sterling finished a crippled Dillashaw in the second round, scoring his first TKO victory since 2014, but not much changed. A W over an aging fighter with one arm. What was there to celebrate? His shoulder came out at the end of the first round. They pointed out to me, I was like, oh, which one? And uh, yeah. I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm on cloud nine right now. This absolute trail of luckiness was getting out of hands. Someone had to step up and expose the fake champion. And what better candidate than the man who never lost the Bantamweight Championship nor a fight since 2016. Everyone's got the same question, Triple C. When are you returning to the UFC? I, mean, I, I hope, I hope to be, possibly get the winner of, uh, of TJ and, uh, and Alja, Alja Lame. Triple C announced his return he laid out a grand plan that began with Aljamain Sterling and culminated with three division championship glory. So again, these, these, Aljamain's a warm up, Sean O'Malley's a warm up, what I really want is that 45 strap. By this point, Sterling had equaled the title defense record, but he was in the same position as before. The most disrespected and vilified champion in the UFC, surpassing Tyron Woodley by a mile. One more victory and statistically, Sterling would become the most successful bantamweight champion, but it was all about Henry the Olympic gold medalist, the double champion, the next challenger for Alexander Volkanovsky. The reason why I'm even coming back is because, you know what guys, I love you guys in Australia, but I'm here to take down Alexander Volkanovsky, Alexander the, the average down under. A loss here would erase all that Sterling had accomplished in the past few years, and he would be remembered as the answer to a trivia question of, who was the most worthless champion in UFC history? The way I see it, I am the champ, he's the challenger. And uh, you, guys, you, guys hired the, you guys hired the right hitman. But a victory. His first pay-per-view main event near his backyard. The defense record staring right at him. And Henry Cejudo talking mad crap at every turn. Not the UFC. Oh, oh, Aljamain's big. Oh, he's long. <laughs> no, no. The elite of the elite. The people that really understand the game. You know, we'll, we'll bet so. The odds were stacked against Aljamain Sterling, and most of the MMA world was rooting for him to fail, but one more victory, and it was set in stone. Just one more stroke of good luck, and Sterling would become, at least on paper, the most successful bantamweight in UFC history. On May 6th, we realized, luck might have been a small component during the record-breaking title reign, luck might have brought him to the mountaintop, but the bantamweight champion remained at the top due to his skill and talent. That one knee had distorted quite a lot, but at UFC 288, Sterling erased all doubt. I'm stopping you with I'm stopping you with this On paper, Sohudo was a nightmare matchup. A supremely accomplished wrestler who was never actually taken down, but Sterling took him down time and time again. Even more impressively, the Funk Master outstruck the former double champion on the feet. The fight was competitive, as he was up against a legitimate great in Henry Sohudo, but when Bruce Buffer declared Sterling as the winner, 
they were out of ammunition, and Sterling was still standing. Al Jermaine Sterling is not John Jones, he is not GSP. The man said it himself, he is not Mike Tyson. I'm not in here pretending to be no Mike Tyson. I'm not pretending to be nobody else. All I can be is the Al Jermaine, the fucking master Sterling. Be me. You step in the cage, I'm a drag <laughs> up and down the octagon. He doesn't dominate and he is not 10 steps ahead of his peers. He is Al Jermaine Sterling champion of a stupidly competitive weight class and his fights are competitive and close as expected but that gold belt has been around his waist for a while now and it is time don't you think sterling has laughed his way to the history books as the most successful bantamweight champion his place is secured and considering the weight class it will be a while before anyone surpasses your current bantamweight champion i hope you enjoyed but for now i gotta bounce as always Catch y'all in the next one. Peace out.